I really, really, really love really short stories. Uh, I love reading short stories. I love writing short stories. Um, by way of explanation, I've got uh, some very short stories from other people and some short stories that I wrote. In the 1970s, Omni magazine ran a competition uh, to find the shortest story in the world. The winner was called Sign at the End of the Universe, and it had just three words. They were these. As a subject to the bet, Ernest Hemingway was once challenged to write a story that would make a man cry. He quickly wrote down six words. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. He won his bet. In the 1950s, Frederick Brown wrote the world's shortest story, uh, shortest science fiction story. It went, and the sun set slowly in the east. For those of you who don't know, it sets in the west. It was the highest dollar rate for any story ever printed. But loads of people wrote in to complain. Uh, they say it wasn't a proper story. It hadn't got a beginning, it hadn't got a middle, it hadn't got an end, it hadn't got characters, uh, it hadn't got most of the things a story should have. So he wrote, after the nuclear war, the last man on earth sat alone. He felt a tap on his shoulder. <laughs> got it all, a little bit, perhaps apart from dialogue. And I think it's from this that I started writing really, really, really short fiction. I have a slight difference in definition. Uh, mine is anything less than 500 words counts. But it's important that you've got everything you want within those 500 words. Now, this is one of my early attempts. I think in this 500 words, it tells you everything you need to know about the two people in the story. You say, still waters run deep. I say, well, actually, still waters don't run deep. They don't run at all. That's why they're called still waters. What you should say is that apparently still waters might have a very strong undercurrent, but it's not very likely. You can tell by looking at the surrounding terrain what the overall low-level disturbance might be. For instance, if it's a rill or river situation, there might be a certain amount of subsurface motion. But if you're talking about a basic mirror or lake scenario, then the probability of aqueous subjacent activity is equal to or near to zero. But when I tell you this and other things, you don't seem to care. I'll be back later. Thank you.